Good morning. We are looking at Mark 5, 21 through 43. And this particular message from Mark is one of a lot of, a lot of things going on. This is a, a very uh, action-packed message this morning. This is a message with interruptions as Jesus goes out to try to heal a child. But I want to start out talking about our own thoughts and our own actions more of a personal nature than a general nature. And the question I was going to ask is, do we reject the work of Jesus that's going on in our lives? Just the thought of it. Not necessarily that we reject Jesus, but that what happened to us was an act through the, through the good will of Jesus Christ in our lives. Or do we think it was, and pass it off as fate, pass it off as the medicine that the doctor prescribed is working, or the surgeon had did what he was supposed to do and the outcome was favorable? And have we done that? Have I've done it at the same time, not to realize what really is going on, that Jesus is working in the margins of our lives constantly. And we don't see it. That is just the same as rejecting him. When we do not realize that what is going on in our lives is not our own works, it may not be anything that the medical community or our professions, our gifts that were given had anything to do with the outcome of what happened. We need to step back and look at faith for what it is. We need to stop thinking that these things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, even the smallest things or the biggest things, are an act of Christ in our lives. Going through an intersection and having someone stop at the last minute who was distracted by their cell phone. Simple things that we do not realize are going on around us in the protection and the margins that Jesus Christ is there for us. Jesus is always in the middle of everything that is going on in our lives when we accept him as our Savior. He is with us constantly. He continues to do his work in our lives day in and day out. And in the messages of the readings today as well, his mercies are new every morning. It's a constant cycle of him being for us and with us in the margins of our lives when we are so busy and consumed with everything else but thinking about what Christ is doing for us. The message today is about Jesus and what he does for others. And it's a really beautiful passage through this. Mark is a gospel of action. Mark explains things and he gets it as almost like an eyewitness that we're looking at what's happening here in this story that we're going to begin here. But I wanted to start out with that message of let's look at what Jesus is doing for us because he's always there and he's always available for help. To understand what he's done in our lives and what he's doing here. And this message today is about Jesus, what he's doing for others with nothing in return, not asking for anything. He heals, he continues to heal. And he doesn't send the bill to your provider. He is the provider. There is nothing more that we have to do than to trust in him, to let him take over our lives. He doesn't ask anything but for us to simply believe and turn your life into his teaching and knowing what his life is for you. For our lives are nothing if we cannot have Jesus in his teaching of forgiveness and love for each of us. Listen to the passages in Mark, and, and Mark's explanations in detail are unfolding of what is happening here of a Jewish leader. And it's very interesting to me that Jairus, who is a 
He is one of the management's teams in the synagogue who actually schedules the rabbis, and he, and he works with a lot of the Sanhedrin. And no doubt, he's heard stories about Jesus, and they weren't good. And, and yet, his faith was given by the Holy Spirit. And when his daughter needed to be saved, he turned to Jesus. Mark 5, 21 through 34. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. They came up, then they came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet and employed for him earnestly, saying, My daughter, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. Faith can hit us through the Holy Spirit's implantation into our hearts. This ruler in the synagogue had faith beyond comparison. He simply said, lay your hands on her and she will be well. Not, can you do anything for her? Lord, can you help? Use this as an example for our own prayers when we say, Lord, help me, but do we believe it? Do we really believe it? Or do we go back and reject Jesus because he can't help me in this situation? Yet this guy had all the faith because he said, just lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. Nothing that Jesus said, it was all him. His faith was strong. Use this as an example in our lives today that we, through our faith, can ask Christ anything and he will provide in his time and calm our anxiety. And he went with him. I love that. He simply went with him. He knew that he really is the ones that were talking against him and plotting against him, but yet Jesus said, oh, didn't say, he just, let's go, let's go. So Jesus went up with Jairus without any questions. He went with him. And a crowd formed, as I always do, around Jesus and his disciples. Drama always followed Jesus throughout everything that he had done in, his, in any of his work in the three years. He was always determined to do it and nothing deterred him the crowds the drama and the chaos and a great crowd followed him and they were thronged about him the, the interpretation as Jesus was, was making his way to the house of Jairus a, a woman in a terrible health crisis for 12 years and she was desperate out of, out of money had gone to seek medical help and actually made it worse. And Mark describes her to a T, describes her and tells us exactly what's happening here. She was at her wit's end. She had nothing left. She was probably waiting to die. She had given everything she had to doctor after doctor and nothing was working. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Now there wasn't anything out there that said, if you could get close to Jesus, he's going to cure you. No. Her faith, just as with Jairus, was strong, was if I could only get near him, if I only could touch even the, the, the fiber or two of his, of his robe, of his clothes, if I could just get close to him, I will be healed. And she was. Faith in action. In the middle of this in, interruption, God is working through it. 
just as God is working in the background in our daily lives, in the most unexpected places, the prayers that were answered, we don't even realize that we have come through what could have been a fatal accident, what could have been any number of tragedies that could happen, but yet Jesus saves us time and time and time again, and we don't even recognize it. That is the rejection of what he wants us to know. For she said, if I, if I can even touch his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. We should learn from this encounter. We don't always know God's movements in our lives. The things that happen to us are not by fate, are not circumstantial situations that we can't explain. Jesus is working in the margins of our lives for those who love him and for those who even reject him. He works for the good. His will is perfect. And he's simply saying, come unto me, for I am the one who will save you. I am the one that will persevere and work with you through your illnesses, through your times when Everything seems to be going wrong. When your friends leave you, when your, your children are prodigal and they never come back, when your wife leaves you or your husband leaves you and you are left devastated, those are the times when Jesus will be there and be with you. We need to perceive this in our minds. It is called faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus perceived in himself that power had gone out from him and immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? As though he didn't know. And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, who touched me? And Jesus dismissed, as he always has, some of the talk that the disciples were saying, there's crowds all around you. He says, nope, nope. Someone touched me and is healed. And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened, and her came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. I can only imagine the heartfelt feelings that Christ had, knowing that the faith of this woman has healed her. He had to be so happy, not only that, but feeling that faith works. And we have the blessed readings that Mark put down here. It is an eyewitness of what Jesus has done what Jesus is doing, and what Jesus will be doing for an eternity. He hasn't changed yesterday, today, or tomorrow. He is the same as he was then, as he is now. He works in the margins of your life every single day. And when we have weak in faith, when we have no faith, we don't recognize and don't understand what he's doing. He's in the margins He's in the background, and he's working, and he's there. Don't we all want the same thing as this woman? Don't we all want to have all of our issues taken care of? But this poor woman who had went 12 years and lost everything she had, simply had come to the end of herself and chose faith, and she saw and what she saw was love on two feet. And that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. The greatest part of this story is now in the reassurance of Jesus Christ. In our lives, when he tells us, 
do not fear, only believe. Mark continues to write these words down, and it is our part as clergy to spell it out, to show you, for you to read and to have faith as well. In times when we feel that all is out of control, that anxiety and and fear have gripped and taken over, is when God will come to us as he had come to Jairus, even though he heard that his daughter was dead. He simply said, do not fear, only believe. Mark 5, 35 through 36, and while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead, why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what he had said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, but believe. This is faith answered. This is faith that has been confirmed with Jairus. He had simply said, come with me and She will live. And Jesus said, please, do not fear, only believe. If you get anything out of this message today, is those words. God says this, it is true. Do not fear, but believe. This is the faith we must have in times when questions come more than answers when we don't get the answer to what we've asked for, faith continues on and will sustain us through those quiet, silent times. And yet, Christ continues on, unwavering. Your daughter is not dead. I can only feel for Jarius at this point because he must have just, heart just broke and sank to the bottom. And was just devastated by the news. But yet Jesus said, do not fear. They go on, as Jesus does, and pursues our lives, and we continue on. He walks with us as he does with him. And when they entered, he had said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. They laughed at him, but he put them all out and took the father and the mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her hand, he said to her, little girl, I say to you, rise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years old. And they were immediately overcome with amazement And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is our Savior. Concerned for our safety, concerned for our well-being, concerned for our feelings, concerned for our hurt and our sickness. And when we have faith that is strong, we know that that we know that he is with us. He will comfort us. And in closing, I'd like to quote from the Lutheran Study Bible some of the discomfort that we have when we find that there's nothing here, but today we can walk away knowing those words, have no fear, believe in me. And here I quote, Jesus heals Jairus' daughter and a woman with a chronic illness Like Jairus, we often worry that the Lord's delay in answering our prayers may end up in a catastrophic failure. But the Eternal One, who overcame death by raising, being raised from the dead, never runs out of time. In fact, His gracious promise is that He shall share eternal, we shall share eternal life with Him. Let us pray. Lord, grant us to believe without doubt that you can heal our illnesses. Give us patience as well that we may be be unmoved while waiting for you to act in your good time 
and according with your gracious will. In Jesus' name, amen.